Today I want to provide you guys with some practical actions and strategies you can take to make sure that your resume does not end up in the garbage. Increasingly, I've been hearing about people applying for programming jobs, but they never get a call back, they never get a first interview, and there's no doubt about it, it's extremely challenging to get your foot in the door. Now, first of all, the people doing the hiring are being extremely selective, but on top of that, most of the resumes that I see are instant disqualifications. Now, the gatekeeper is the person who's going to see your application first, and they're going to decide whether or not your application is worth considering. So let's talk about how we can get past the gatekeeper and into the first interview. Okay, so I've made up a little fictional company named Innovatech. This is just a generic software development company. Because these strategies are focused on your initial application, they can apply to anything from game dev all the way to enterprise programming. So let's jump over to this company's initial job posting and we'll have a closer look. If we come over to the company page on LinkedIn, you can see they've recently made a post advertising an internship. So maybe you decide this job sounds interesting, you're looking for this kind of role, it sounds like it suits you. So you open up the job posting and take a closer look at what the details are. Now the introduction paragraphs are good to read, but they probably don't contain too much critical information. What you wanna do is come down to the next sections where there are bullet points. Now, obviously, when the company lays out what your future responsibilities are going to be, make sure it's lined up with something you actually want to do. But it's this next section under requirements that you really have to analyze carefully. This is where they're going to itemize all the qualities and skills they're looking for. Finally, if we come down to the bottom of this job posting, you can see it's just some instructions on how to submit. Okay, so that's a pretty straightforward, typical internship posting that would be for a front-end developer who's either still in school or maybe a recent graduate and has no practical experience. Now let's go look at a typical resume. I've aggregated several of the resumes and cover letters that I've seen recently into one here so that I can point out all the shortcomings and we'll walk through the solutions one by one. Now the gatekeeper hardly has any time to look at your resume to decide if you qualify or not. They're not even gonna read your cover letter. Don't worry about that yet. This is the most important part, right at the top of your resume. Everybody puts their contact information on the page, that's standard. But the first mistake most people make is this next part under core skills. People write down every skill they feel like they qualify for, even if it has nothing to do with the job at all. This is a surefire way to get your resume into the garbage because it looks like you're doing a spray and pray. What you need to do instead is make this a checklist that matches the job posting. The gatekeeper should be able to take one look at the top of your resume and instantly qualify you for an interview. So choose the skills that are most relevant to the job that were listed in the job posting. So that would be JavaScript, React, possibly Node. And then closer to the end of this list, you start adding additional skills that are relevant, such as Git. Things like quantum computing might be interesting to you, but they do not care about that. Believe me, they do not care. Reduce this list down to the core skills required for this job. Specifically, you have to match everything that was in the requirements on the job posting. Let's just go back to that quickly and take a look. What was on here that's specific? Well, they say JavaScript, React, Node, Git, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript Frameworks. It'd be good to put something like that in there. RESTful API integration and async requests. That would be a good one. These other ones are a little bit more generic and about soft skills and about your education. So don't worry about that. Just worry about the things you can kind of bullet point and itemize. For the rest of these things like problem solving skills and attention to detail, just add a very small paragraph under your core skills list that addresses these things. So let's jump back to the resume and quickly look at what we could change on there to improve this. So I'm going to delete everything under the core skills section, and I'm going to start adding in the skills that were listed in the job description. So at the very top of this list has to come the things from the job posting. And when you're done that, you can add one, two, maybe three additional things that are actually related to being a front end developer. And you would do the same thing if you were applying for a .NET job, if you're applying for a game dev job, list the things from the job description first, and then add relevant things that make you look even more qualified. And you can just write, I'm a team player who loves solving problems with an unparalleled attention to detail. I do my best work in a fast paced, agile environment. Remember that the goal of this first part of the resume is to make them want to read more so they can see that you're qualified. Now they might skim the rest of it, but it's more than likely that they're going to go to your cover letter now and read what you have to say. So this is where people make their second big mistake. You can read at the top here that this person begins their letter with the words, dear hiring manager. 
This is a sure sign of spray and pray. You need to take the time to figure out who the gatekeeper is and address this letter to them. So let's start with that. Sometimes you'll be able to tell who the gatekeeper is just by looking at the application because their name is going to be on it and it'll say send your correspondence to this specific person. So then it's easy, but sometimes it's not so easy. And if you recall on this application, it just says to send in your application to some generic email address. So we got to figure out who's going to be reading that. The easiest way to identify the gatekeeper is to go back onto social media to wherever the company posted this job in the first place. Find out who has reacted to this post. Usually you're going to find there's some kind of HR person or in smaller companies, it might be a person that's actually wearing two hats. So look for somebody that's either reposted the job or at least works for the company and has reacted to this particular social media post. The goal here is for you to become a known person. That means that when the gatekeeper sees your application come in, even if only subconsciously, they will recognize your name. So connect with that person on LinkedIn and you can just send them a friendly connection message that says, hey, looks like there's a lot of exciting opportunities at your company. Now, if possible, don't apply for the job until they've actually accepted your connection request. But beyond that, you want to look at the rest of the company. Try to figure out who your boss is going to be. Try to figure out who your colleagues are going to be and start connecting with these people on LinkedIn. Connect with them on Twitter as well and start looking for recent posts that they've made because you want to start to become relevant and you're going to use this information information in your cover letter. For example, if you can figure out who the team lead is, go over to Twitter and find their latest post, give it a heart and start following that person. That person is going to recognize you too. And you can reference whatever it was that they were tweeting about, you know, as long as it's relevant, you can reference that in your cover letter. So let's assume that you've gone ahead and done those things. Then you're going to come back to the cover letter and let's make some changes. The first and most important thing you can do here is address the cover letter to the gatekeeper. So we'll put an attention line and then we'll change dear hiring manager. Now we'll address the gatekeeper by their first name. The rest of the letter here is extremely generic spray and pray. We've got to clean it up. Your first paragraph has to be why you want to work for this particular company. Now I'm just going to paste something in here, but the key points are reference the company by name in the first sentence. Next, you found some post by this guy, Calvin. He's the team lead. You saw him post something on Twitter. So you can say, I really related to the, what he posted. It resonated with me and made me want to come and join you guys. Not only have you mentioned the company by name now, you've also name dropped a very important person. It shows that you're interested and builds more of a connection with these guys. Okay, second paragraph has to be about why you are the perfect fit for this position. So I'm going to paste in my version here, but the key points are you need to reiterate the checklist again from your resume that we were talking about earlier. So you need to cover the points like JavaScript, React, and Node, or whatever it is that you're going for. If it's a Unity job, say Unity, C Sharp, and a few other things. And then on top of that, you need to qualify yourself for whatever role it is. So in this case, it's an internship. So say why you're going to be a good intern. And that is generally you're going to be there to soak up as much knowledge as you can from the experts who work there. The rest of the cover letter is just a polite sign off. And you can say a few additional things if you want, you know, thank you for the opportunity, but never use words that are like speculative. So don't say, I hope you call me instead, right under the assumption that they are going to call you. So here, instead of saying, I look forward to the possibility of a future discussion, just say, I look forward to discussing it with you because they will call you. Why wouldn't they? You're perfect. Okay, last step. Let's go back to the resume. There's various cleanup things we can do to make it even more professional. You got to remember that if your resume makes it past the gatekeeper, then other people are going to start reading it and they're going to start following your links and everything that you've got in there. So first of all, make sure you have a link to your actual LinkedIn profile. If they follow this now and you've connected with several people, it's not going to show you as a third degree connection anymore. You'll be a first or a second. Next, let's talk about work experience. You don't need to list every single job you've ever had since high school here. Let's change the title to say recent experience. And you want to put the most relevant thing that you've done recently that actually is applicable to this job. Things like barista and library assistant. Yeah, those might be interesting, but they have nothing to do with the job that you're actually applying for. So just put the most recent one or two jobs that you've had that are actually related to computer science or programming. I'm just going to cut those other two jobs right out of here. 
By changing the title to say recent experience, we are implying that we have more experience than just this. It's just not listed here on the resume. Now, another improvement we can make here is at the moment, we're not actually qualifying any of these things that the person has done. Let's look at the first one here, developed responsive web apps using JavaScript and React. Well, that's a great thing to say, but it doesn't say anything about how good it was or what, you know, what was the result of your work? So let's highlight this and replace it with something better. So here we're pointing out that this enhanced user interaction and significantly improved client satisfaction. That sounds a lot better than just saying that you built something. Let's do the same thing for the second one here. You integrated some RESTful APIs and what happened? So here we're saying a little bit about the outcome, but we're also using a metric to qualify this, a 30% increase in system efficiency. Let's do the same for this last bullet point about testing and debugging. You can say that you improved overall downtime by 25%. Now, of course, only include metrics if you actually know what the metric is. Otherwise, just describe the positive outcome. So the final thing I'm going to say about this is down in the education section, we've listed our degree as a Bachelor of Science in Virtual Reality. Well, that's great, but this job has nothing to do with virtual reality. So you can either just remove that part or you can change it to be a more generic degree because your degree probably was a degree in computer science, but you had a specialty in some field. Again, because virtual reality has nothing to do with this job, let's just get it out of there so it's not a distraction for the person reading this. Remember that the entire purpose of these documents is to make you appear to be the perfect person for this job. So anything that's taking the reader sideways or down some other path, we want to avoid that. These kinds of details can be discussed during the interview, and I bet you it will only be if you volunteer the information. You know, the reality of it is these days that the university degree doesn't matter so much, well, some companies do need it for various reasons, you know, either contractual reasons, immigration reasons, or otherwise. However, I think we've all come to realize that having a university degree is not a measure of how successful you're going to be in this particular job. What we're really looking for is people that can come in at a junior level and very quickly become seniors. I'm talking within five years. You know, a harsh truth that maybe nobody will ever tell you is that senior devs don't need junior devs. A senior dev can do what a junior dev can do 10 times faster and with less mistakes. What we need is people who can come in and just learn as fast as possible, can make mistakes and learn from those mistakes and keep growing. We really want people at the same level that we're at so that you can help us solve the complex problems, so that you can challenge the ideas that we have. I'll tell you right now, the bar has never been lower and it's getting hard to try to find people that are really high quality. So I hope those of you out there, and I know, I know that you are because you watch this channel. This channel is not for beginners and we want people like you in the industry helping us. So I hope that this video helps you come to work with people like me. So yes, obviously there's a little bit of selfish motivation behind me making this video. The bottom line is if you can't get your resume past the gatekeeper, we're never going to get to talk to you. And then you're going to miss out on lots of opportunities. Keep in mind the key points when you're putting together these documents. Number one, at the top of your resume, make sure your core skills read like a checklist that automatically qualifies you for the position. Number two, become a known person. Connect with the gatekeeper on social media and reference them in your cover letter by name. Reference other people that are going to be on your team in that first paragraph. Those two things alone are going to make you stand head and shoulders above every other applicant. Now, it just occurred to me as I'm wrapping up recording this video that some people are going to ask about uh, repositories and previous work and if you should show them. And again, I'm just going to fall back to saying yes, if it's relevant. So if you're going to share stuff from Git, I only say one thing, and that is make sure it looks professional. Make sure you've got a readme in there, a few images. And even a change log would be good. Show that you know how to use packaging and versions. That would also be extremely good. Uh, if you're going to go into game dev or some kind of mobile development um, and it's relevant, then I, uh, by all means, definitely share your link to your um, itch profile or any games you've published on Steam. You know, even if you're kind of uh, harsh and critical on your own stuff, publishing a game is 
a very big deal. So, um, you know, even if you think maybe it's, you could have done it better or whatever, I think it's still worth linking that. You don't have to put it front and center on your resume, just put it, you know, a little closer to the end, but it's definitely a sign that you are a capable, self-motivated person. One final tip is consider laying your resume out like a professional. Having a professional look on your resume so that it doesn't look like a Word document which everybody else is going to submit will also help your resume stand out. Now, it's not too hard to learn how to use a tool like InDesign. This course here goes on sale from time to time. I've done it. It's very good. There's a lot of really great programmers out there that have so much potential and they just never get an interview. So if you know somebody like that, please share this video with them. It doesn't matter what kind of programming they're into. It might help them out. And it might help you out too. So make sure you come back to this before you start applying for any work. That's all I've got for you today. I'll see you in the next one.